Welcome to Blueford School, Prof G. The lesson is set up your circuit playground. Welcome makers. This is the board we're using, the circuit playground Blue Fruit, sometimes known as a CPB. And it's gonna be the brains of our project. Now this is a beginner friendly board that'll allow us to build the project without requiring any soldering. Now in this video, what we're gonna do is set up our CPB so that it can run any of the code that's used for the projects in this playlist. Now we only need to do this once for these projects, but these are also the steps that you would follow whenever setting up a brand new Circuit Playground Blue Fruit. Now there's just one thing to remember if you were creating a brand new project that had new capabilities like working with motors or motion sensors, you might need to add additional library files, but don't worry, all of my project videos tell you exactly the library files you need right at the start. So let's get started, maker. Open a browser and head to circuitpython.org, click Downloads, scroll and find the board that we're using, Circuit Playground Blue Fruit, and click to download. Your browser is probably showing a number that's later than the one that's shown here. The open source team behind CircuitPython is always updating the language with new features and better stability, so just get the latest one listed. After clicking Download, your browser might save this file to your Downloads folder. I have my browser configured to ask where I want to save this, so I'm going to save mine to the desktop. And we just downloaded a .uf2 file that we'll use to put CircuitPython on the board. But before we do that, let's also download the library files. These are files that extend the CircuitPython language to do additional things, including controlling LED lights and working with Bluetooth. So click Libraries at the top of this page. And the first bundle should have a number that matches the version of CircuitPython that you just downloaded. So click this top bundle. And again, yours might save it to the download folder. I'm saving mine to the desktop. And this is everything we need to download to configure our board. Now let's get our files on the board. So now you can exit your browser. My files are on the desktop, so I'll return there. You might need to open your downloads folder. And now let's set up your CPB to accept the .uf2 file that we just downloaded. To do this, plug your USB cable into your computer, then plug the micro USB end into your CPB. And it's very important to make sure that you're using a data cable. Many cables are charge only, so if for some reason your CPB doesn't show up in the desktop like I'm about to demonstrate, you might be using the wrong cable. Now I'm using a CPB that I've already installed a project on, so you're not seeing anything flash on the board, but if you're using a brand new CPB, you'll probably see a rainbow pattern swirl across the circle of LED lights on the board. Looks cool, but this is about to go away. Then double click the center reset button on the CPB. You should see the device flash, then the circle of LEDs on the device will light up green, and you'll see a new device mounted on your computer named CPlay Boot. Now this is your circuit playground, and when mounted on your computer, it looks and acts just like a USB drive. So you can drag and drop files onto this device. So now drag the .uf2 file that you just downloaded, that's the one that starts with Adafruit underscore circuit python underscore circuit playground, and drop it into CPlay Boot. Now this file will copy over, the CPlay Boot device will dismount from your computer. If you have a Mac, you'll probably get a disk not ejected properly warning in the upper right. Just ignore that. This is not a problem at all. And you'll see a new device mounted on your computer named CircuitPy. Congratulations! You've just configured your CPB to run CircuitPython. By the way, if you ever have a CPB that you haven't used in a while and you're wondering what version of CircuitPython is installed on the board, just plug it in, open the CircuitPy volume when it mounts, then open up the boot underscore out dot txt file, and you'll see the version that's installed and the date that version was created. Now it's time to copy over the additional library files we'll use for our Bluetooth LED projects. Now the reason we do this is that these library files extend the CircuitPython programming language so that we can do even more stuff. Now the reason all of this capability isn't built into the file that we just copied over is that it would take up too much room on the device. On devices like the CPB, there's simply not enough space for all of the files in the LIB folder, so we just copy over what we need when we need it. Now I'm going to leave my CircuitPy volume open and set up an LIB folder that has all of the files that we need. Then I'm going to copy this LIB folder onto my Circuit Playground. Now all the libraries that we want are in this folder here that we just downloaded, not the UF2 file. You can actually throw the UF2 file in the trash now if you want to. Now we need this folder named adafruit-circuitpython-bundle. Open that up. There are a bunch of additional folders and files in here. If you ever want to explore Adafruit's example code, you can find lots of examples in the example folder, but the files that we're interested in right now are in the LIB folder. So open up that folder, and in another window, I'm going to navigate to the desktop, and I'm going to create a brand new LIB folder where we'll drag over just the library files that we need. So if you have a Mac, you can right-click or two-finger click, select New Folder. I'm going to name this folder LIB. 
It's very important that it's lowercase lib. Then I'll open this new folder. There's nothing in it, but I'm going to return to the original folder that contains all of the libraries. And for the Bluetooth LED projects, we need these folders and files, seven in total. So I'm going to speed up the video, but here are the names so that you can just scroll and find them and drag them over into the new lib folder. Or on the Mac, if you option drag like I'm doing in my video, you can actually make copies of the files in the folders so you're not simply moving them. Now, once you've copied over all seven of these libraries, five folders named Adafruit BLE, Adafruit Bluefruit Connect, Adafruit Bus Device, Adafruit Circuit Playground, and Adafruit LED Animation, plus two MPY files, NeoPixel and Simple I.O., we're ready to copy the LIB folder to our Circuit Playground. So now I'm going to close the window that contains all of the Adafruit libraries. I don't need all of those files. Then I'm going to navigate back to the LIB folder that I just created that contains only those folders and files that I need. And I'm going to drag this folder, the LIB folder I just created, onto my CircuitPy volume. This copies over the LIB folder with all the libraries that I need onto my CPB, and I'm ready to put a CircuitPython program onto this device that'll do some cool stuff. In the next video, I'll show you how we can connect an LED strand to our Circuit Playground Bluefruit, then program it to respond to the Adafruit Bluefruit Connect app, where we can get it to change lights to a new selected color and flash different light animations. Once you've got that set up, you'll be ready to add a strand of flashing lights to any room, but you'll also be ready to build all sorts of projects, including wearables like the Bluetooth scarf or the Bluetooth tie, or complete projects like the Bluetooth mason jar light. So be sure to check out the other videos in this playlist. You might also like some of the other videos on my channel, and be sure to let me know in the comments or on Twitter when you make something awesome.